On today's show, we answer the question, how will you get water? There are a number of different ways that you can get water living out in the desert. It doesn't really seem like there would be. <sighs> um, <laughs> one of the ways is just drilling for water, which of course has been done for many hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Another way is an atmospheric water generator, which you can explain what that is. Well, that one, I think that one's really cool. That one just pulls water out of the air, right? Just takes takes whatever's naturally in, in the environment. Yes, it converts the humidity, which of course there's not a lot of humidity in the desert either, but in the evenings, it usually kind of, the humidity level goes up, so you could use it then. Uh, the other way that you could get water in the desert is water hauling, where they literally just drive truckloads of water to the place and you store it in a cistern. Another way that you can do it is through some gray water recycling. And I believe there was one more, and I can't remember what that one is. What was Let's the other see, one? what do we forget? We're forgetting something. Water hauling? Well, gray water, pulling it out of the oh. atmosphere, and? Rainwater harvesting. That's it. Is the other one. Although that one would be hard, I imagine, being in California in the middle of a drought. Yeah, that one would probably be kind of difficult. <laughs> but I also believe that if you kind of incorporate all of those technologies and you use all five of those methods, you're probably not gonna have any kind of water problem. Now, the good thing, about the property at Lutherville is that I did my research beforehand and I discovered that there are about three or four wells that are within three or four miles hmm. of the property that are only about 100 feet deep. So as long as the water table stays fairly high, it should be theoretically <laughs> easy to get water. The other concern though that I do have is there's a lot of rock out here. Yes. So I don't know how far down the bedrock is. It could be that this sand is two feet deep and everything is solid stone underneath that, which could make drilling a well kind of hard. And now is that something where you would just drill down till you find out or is there like sonar equipment or something that you could test that before you do the actual drilling? Funny you should ask. <laughs> well. Yes, there is. That's one really cool technological thing that we have these days that they didn't have many years ago. Years ago, you used to have to do what they called a test well, where they would literally just randomly start drilling holes to try to find water. Nowadays, yes, there's tellu tellulectronic, I can't remember how you pronounce it. <laughs> you know what, I'll throw the word underneath and then what I can do, I'll do a voiceover. There you go. Here's the real pronunciation. Electrotelluric sounding. So that's what it's called. And <laughs> when you do that, um, you can actually use sonar, radar to find out the topography of what's underneath the ground and figure out where the water's at. Well, that's fascinating because water is pretty important. Yes. Water is the single most important resource for building a home. Water is life. Water is sanitation. Now, to my knowledge, every state in the country requires that a parcel of land has access to clean drinking water before the county will even issue a building permit. You don't have water, you can't legally build a house. Not in the city, not in the country, not even in the desert. Water is always your very first concern. Now, if groundwater can't be located, then according to San Bernardino County Development Code, section 84.21.030, paragraph J, subparagraph three, part C, the Division of Environmental Health Services will have to grant approval for water hauling. Considering the drought issues, there should be no reason for the county to deny permission for alternative water sources. Mm -mm. The gray water recycling option is exciting as well because to your knowledge, no one has ever done that, have they? No, no, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Like I said earlier, I don't even know if I can do that. So, I mean, can you explain what gray water is for the people that don't know? Sure. So all homes produce two types of wastewater, known as black water and gray water. The water from toilets is known as black water and typically enters the sewer or septic system. Mm -hmm. Alternately, you can use a waterless technology called composting toilets, which literally turn feces and urine into compost. All other wastewater from showers and sinks and washing machines is known as gray water and is sent to the sewer in city homes, but is often filtered and used for garden irrigation and off-grid projects. Now, in researching various sources of water technology, I realized that if you could filter your gray water for irrigation, 
why not distill that filtered water in a commercial distiller? All right, by boiling it back into drinkable water again, you could actually recycle a huge percentage of your water supply. Now, I've never heard of anyone else trying this. Perhaps some other homes or businesses might use gray water distilling to recycle their water supply, but if they do, I'm not aware of them doing it. After doing a bit of research, I did find this website, which shows the Department of Defense in the year 2002 was attempting to develop this type of system for gray water recycling for the military. And here is a paragraph that goes into more detail, and it even does mention near the end that it could potentially be used for civilian efforts. I don't know where this project ended up, or if anybody has actually followed through and done it, but clearly I am not the first person to have thought of it. The big question will be if you can afford to use a combination of all of those technologies, and if San Bernardino County will grant you the permission to use those technologies. And so far, all of my dealings with county officials have been fantastic. I've actually emailed government workers in San Bernardino County and gotten replies in 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Oh. I mean, I would have been pleased to get a reply in a day or two, and they were like right on it. So <laughs> hopefully all of my dealings will be that cooperative and courteous. So far, the folks in San Bernardino have proven to be quite professional. And that's something I'm going to need to get a good water supply. <laughs> Lutherville is an educational series inspiring kids and adults to become excited about innovations in science and technology by documenting the design and construction of a Mojave Desert homestead called Galatea Meridian. Witness the crazy story of how Eric Muss Barnes, an unemployed computer geek and struggling novelist, risks homelessness by spending most of his life savings to build an off-grid dream house in the middle of nowhere. Having purchased vast acres of the Old West, can Eric find a stable job and create his home before his money runs out? Take a journey where fortitude and a pioneering spirit continue to forge the American dream on the romantic landscape of the American frontier. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Lutherville. Please remember to share it with your friends and family. And remember, if your ambitions don't scare you, they're not big enough. <laughs>